we are studying from Ephesians uh, for several weeks now. So we'll continue our study uh, from Ephesians. Hope you are learning and applying these things that we are learning uh, here every week. And our Bible studies uh, repeat and continue uh, the th- same theme as we go through on the Sundays and I hope that also give some more perspective and insight and additional information also uh, as you <coughs> gather together for those studies also. So we'll read from Ephesians chapter 4, uh, verses 17 through 32. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 through 32. We'll read from uh, NIV. It is on the screen. You can read along as we read or you can look into your Bibles or your, uh, you know, whatever the uh, things that you have, you can look into that and uh, you know you can follow through as we read. Let us read together, but as we uh, study God's word. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 through 32. Let us read. So I tell you this, and I insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. You, however, did not come to know Christ that way. Surely you heard of him and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully in his neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry and do not give the devil a foothold. He who has been stealing must steal no longer but must work, doing something useful with his own hands that he may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. You know that it is a long passage. And uh, we will not be able to go word by word or verse by verse, but just get an overall theme of what Paul is talking about here. Last week we learned our behavior should affect, our, our belief should affect our behavior. Whatever we believe, that should have an effect upon our behavior, how we conduct our lives. That is what we said last time. Today we come to the second part of the same thing. And Paul is talking about uh, something more about the lifestyle of a child of God, those who have received the grace of God, those who are called by God, you know, those who have revealed all the mysteries of God. That person, how should they conduct their life? And again, remember that we are not trying to get anything from outside. This is outright the scripture that is telling us. So, you know, uh, saying these things may be very difficult. And uh, these things may be on our face sometime. And so don't uh, misunderstand. You know, this is the scripture. So we try to understand that. The word of God is like a, you know, surgical knife. You know, it cut through and uh, it removes those things. When we yield to that, it is always good. We don't want to rebel or, or against it. We have to yield and receive God's word as it is. So you know my heart where it is. And so I hope that you won't be offended by the things we are going to learn together. So that's a caveat we take in advance before we go further. So the question is this actually. Is Christianity is a way to life or a way of life? Is Christianity is a way to life or a way of life? The answer is both. Christianity is a way to life. Jesus said, I am the door. We cannot go to God 
without Christ. So God, Jesus is the door we can enter. That is a way to eternal life. John writes in the scripture, there are three different kinds of book that he wrote. One is the gospel, the other one is the letter, the other one is the prophetical book. In the gospel, he writes and he says that the way to eternal life. In the writings, he talks about the Christian life that we should live. And the revelation that we read about the victorious life that we will have in the future or we should have in, in our life. So I will talk about so much about life in that sense. So Jesus is the only way to life. That is what the scripture Bible teaches. Not only that, that's not the end of it. The rest of the story is that Jesus is, or Jesus, the Christianity is a way of life also. This is a lifestyle. This is a way of life. Jesus again said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. This is a way that uh, we conduct our life, the way that we live also. Paul said in three chapters in Ephesians, the way to life, and here he talk about the way of life. So that is the way the second part of this letter goes. So the assumption is this. This is the, the thesis point that we can look into today as we can expound. This is what it is. Transformation is the natural result of justification. Transformation is the natural result of justification. Paul says that those who have justified or you know, declared by God as innocence, what happened then? There is a change that happens in those people's life. That is an automatic response to salvation. That is what Paul is talking about here. So that is a theme. We try to expound the examples that Paul gives us also. So there are three things that Paul talks about here. One is the pattern of the old life. The second one is the principle of the new life. The third one is the practices for the new life. The pattern is the principle and the practice. Those are the three things we are going to look into. So you just read it actually. You will be able to get it when you read those things when we, when we read here. So the first thing that Paul talks about, the pattern of the old life, verses 16 through 19. There are two things that characterize this old life. One is this, an ignorant mind. And the second thing is a hardened heart. An ignorant mind and a hardened heart. The ignorant mind, the ignorance they're talking about is not the lack of information. We all know that there is enough information. You don't have to go to a seminary anymore, a university anymore. You don't have to go anywhere else actually. Sitting at your home, you know, in your fingertip, there are information. We call information highway. You can go any way you want to. So people are not ignorant, not because of the lack of information. When we talk about the spiritual things, people even are not ignorant because of the lack of even spiritual information. It is because of the indifferent attitude, attitude towards this information. So it is everywhere. You see that. You know, you read, you turn on the radio, you turn on the TV, there is internet. You take any place, there is ample and enough information that is given to all of us all the time. The people are not spiritually ignorant simply because of the lack of information. It is because of the, their indifferent attitude towards the things of God. So these people's mind is ignorant. Why that mind is ignorant? Paul says that they have a futile mind or their thinking is ineffective or useless or unsuccessful or without uh, no purpose whatsoever at all. Their thinking is futile. And why their understanding is darkened. Paul says at another place in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 through 6, he says, you know, the, the God of this universe has blinded the eyes of the unbelievers. You now there is a shutter, there is a veil in their eyes. They are not able to see these things. You say this marvelous truth of the gospel, very simple. That Jesus came and he died for us and you put your trust in him, you can be saved. This is as simple as it is. But it is sometimes difficult for people to conceive because the, the, the devil has blinded the eyes of the unbeliever. Their mind is, their understanding is darkened. Because they have a futile mind, darkened understanding, they are alienated from even from God and the life of God. They are alienated from the life of God. They reject the things of God. They cut them off from God. This is the way the old life 
was for us this is the way the old life is in the people those who are living still in this indifference and ignorance and what happened then the rest of the story paul says their heart to become hardened they become insensitive to god and his ways they heart to become hardened they don't think properly they don't have a purpose in their mind what happened they just live for today they heart to become hardened you know they just repeat the same thing and there are words that paul uses that they lost all se- sensitivity they had to become hardened they lost the sensitivity then they gave themselves to sensuality so just to eat drink and make merry tomorrow i will die just have party all the time enjoy life you know this is the way they see they had to become hardened they don't have any concern about other people they have no concern about even themselves in that matter they have to become hardened and they are greedy they are they are working all uncleanness with the greediness they are looking for one after the another you know they from one addiction to another this is the way people live because this is what they are they are they are caught into there is nothing they can they can do about that at all this is the way the old life is verses 17 18 and 19 that paul says so they are ignorant of mind hardened heart they don't understand the things of god they are indifferent towards the things of god this is the way people live and this is the way we all were right this is the way we all were once before the gospel has enlightened our mind open our eyes open our hearts the second part is that then that is not the way that we should live so that was a pattern of the old life we cannot live that way anymore at all we cannot live the two ways we cannot walk in the two ways at the same time you cannot chase two rabbits at the same time you cannot do two things you know we call multitasking but it is very difficult task actually you know you sleep and listen to me at the same time it is very difficult you cannot do that at all it is two things you cannot do at the same time now you just focus not to do paul says that you can go this direction and that direction at the same time so he bring the principles for the new new life what is those principles next verses 20 onwards there we see you think differently you think differently paul's emphasis is on the mind over here change your mind the, the patterns of your thoughts how you think you know what is salvation at the end or where it starts by the way it starts with a, a repentance it starts with it is not feel good actually we caught about the seeker sensitive things and all you know you just feel good you come to a spiritual therapy on sunday mornings actually and everything is going to be so wonderful and comfortable when you feel when you go from here you feel so good that's not what the salvation is salvation first and the foremost is the principle that starts with the salvation is what it is change of mind that is as simple as it is repentance change of mind our attitude towards the things of this world our attitude towards the th- things of god our attitude towards ourselves our attitude towards the word of god and all these things change because it is a u turn as usually it says it is a u turn it is a change of mind that is the most important thing so our mind the paul gives lot of emphasis to the mind in philippians he talk about mind think all these things romans chapter 12 he talk about renew your mind colossians he says are you think the things above so mind 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 is so much of important so paul says are you think differently how that start this is what paul says you however did not come to know christ that way the not the former way you know futility of mind hardening of heart ignorant of god things of god that is on the way you came to christ how did you came to christ two things paul says verse 21 surely you surely you heard of him you heard of him and you were taught in him you heard of him so this is the first step right we heard the gospel of jesus christ so this is what it is jesus the son of god who came to this world to die on behalf of my place on my place he died on the cross on behalf of me when i put my trust in jesus christ and he died for me i accept that fact you know i can be saved the poor bible says this believe in your heart confess with your mouth and you shall be saved believe that jesus died for your sins confess with your mouth that he rose from the dead and you can be saved this is what the gospel is all about if you have never accepted 
understood this this is our symbol as it is we encourage you to to receive jesus in your heart for that we start with the hearing god's word gospel then what happened the step, second step you taught in him so the christian faith it comes there is lot of teaching so actually we can say that the the majority of the part of our worship or all other thing is what teaching why this is important we preach the gospel to people out there or people don't understand the things we teach the believers those who understand the things so the scripture is given to us we are the people of the book so this book is our foundation this is not just we don't worship the book but this is the the tool this is the foundation this is the principle that god has given us to live and uh, and conduct our lives so you have heard the gospel we are taught in the scripture taught about him taught what paul says that taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in jesus so what we are taught we are taught the truth jesus is the truth god's word jesus said sanctify them with your truth your word your word is true john 17 17 sanctify them by your word because your word is true then how we are taught we are taught by the power of the holy spirit you know when the holy spirit comes he is the spirit of truth and he will guide us in all the truth so the the basis of truth is god's word the means is the holy spirit so this is not only about you know information that we try to bring god's word in accordance with the truth of god's word we are learn and we are learning we are growing that is the way our mind being changed so how do we do it we store our mind with the things of god you know we we talk about this actually it is very very important you read god's word meditate upon god's word you fill your mind with the things of god you now you the things will change there, there is a transformation that will take place when we start to do things like that this is very crucial and important because of that so teaching is very important and paul says the first thing that you think differently in accordance with the word of god in accordance with the truth of god's word then the second thing paul says the principles of the new life is that get rid of the old self get rid of the old self there are three things that paul explained there or paul expected the ephesians to do three ways he says put on put off and put away put off put on and put away it is like for simple terms you can understand that it is like a change your old cloth that's what paul says you were lived in the old pattern of life with that old cloth but now how do you do it you have to change to the new cloth you know in roman chapter 6 that paul explained that more extensively this principle very well over there the principle is this you think differently then what happened then when you start to think differently and based upon god's word you are able to act differently also that is the way it goes there as simple as it is you think differently you act differently paul says that that is as simple that we can do over there so the principle is this you have to be think differently you have to act differently to act differently your thought pattern should be right and then what happened then then we be the practices of the new life that is where we are going to dwell it a longer time over here the third thing with the practices of the new life so paul now gives some specific directions for living the new life as christian should live three practices that paul emphasizes over here one is this you should have a straight kind hearted talk verse 25 verse 29 and verse 31 look at that verse 25 29 and 31 therefore each of you must put off all falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor for we all are members of one body verse 29 do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen verse 31 get rid of all bitterness rage anger brawling slander along with everything every form of malice so how do we talk then again this is what we said last week again so i don't want to say much of it what happened there is nothing called a small talk words are powerful words are powerful right words are very important this is the tool in our spiritual warfare we know each other by not by our thoughts actually it is by our 
words what we say or what we didn't say based upon that so communication is very important so paul gives the practical imperatives over here paul says that how do you talk you talk nicely you talk sincerely you talk kindly to people this is as there's a rocket science in that right so as a christian how do you talk you talk kindly to one another your one word can encourage a person remember that that may be a affirmation for them so when we open before you open the mouth we have to think actually what we are going to say it says this is a 20 seconds rule before you say 20 seconds you think what we are going to say it whether this is going to benefit this person help fit this person establish this person help this person anyway if it is not what keep that with yourself you <laughs> know nobody want that information what so ever at all that doesn't mean that you should not tell any of the things as we said last week but kind heart to talk paul says you know bring it very carefully there is a prayer that more or less most of the days i pray actually for uh, isaiah chapter 50 verse 20 for i think that is a beautiful prayer that all of us can pray especially as a church actually we can pray isaiah chapter 50 verse 24 this is what the word says actually the lord god given has given me the tongue of the learned that i should know how to speak so you before you go to work before you do the things actually before you look on your facebook on the morning just this put this somewhere else actually on your phone or somewhere else read this what says lord teach me how to speak a word in season to him who is weary he awakens me morning by morning he awakens my ear to hear as the learned so morning how do you get up you pray the lord give me the right to word to talk to the right people the right way for right reasons that is where we start our day that is a good thing you know that is what god is looking into so the principle of the new life is this you claim that you are saved your life is you know your change and things are happen how this other people know this actually first and foremost is your speech the way you talk is already changed look at that person things are changed so the practice of the new life you just apply this in any of your relationship actually in your home to to your husband or wife or your parents or children or to your friends or boss or other people you you just test this week actually you change the way you talk to people how the circumstances situations is going to change half of our problems comes the way that we respond or we talk right everything come from that actually we'll talk about little later little detail about that so the principle is this we think differently we have to put on put off and put away or you act differently what is the practices of it you speak different you speak the kind heart talk to people with the compassion in heart the second thing paul talk about verse 31 this is a huge subject we can dwell here for a long time the little practical application we bring it over here verse 31 it says paul says that uh, verse 28 uh 20 26 i'm sorry 26 then we go from there responsible temper so our talk is different now then what happened then our temper is is also you know tamed or that was controlled by the holy spirit our responsible temper verse 26 in your anger do not sin some other version says that be angry <laughs> you know if you ask people those who are learning the language and all anyway you translate that is what is bible canton here only one place in the entire scripture that tells us be angry some more people are very happy about the underlining there i see that somebody underlining actually show their husband or wife even pastor said this sunday be angry and no 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 you read rest of the things also it's not only that be angry we just dull little time with the anger actually i think that is very helpful or be angry what happened then be angry but do not sin do not let the sun go down while you are still angry stay up and fight until it is finished now no that's what it says what is so we will stay here little bit with anger actually today we see so this i think that is a practical nothing nothing therapy but practical we can see so the newness of life is seen in the way that we control and express our temper so there is nothing wrong to have feelings there is nothing wrong to have feelings there is nothing wrong to have express the feeling either all the emotions are given by god you agree that how many of you agree that i uh, know half people don't agree it's all right <laughs> so that is their response to that you know all our emotions why 
glad, joy, or sorrow, or any kind of emotion you take, actually, this is all part of our disposition that God has created in such a way. So, emotion in itself has no problem whatsoever at all. Period. So, we understand that part. There is nothing wrong with any kind of emotion. In that case, along with the line, we can say, anger in itself is not good or bad. Anger is just an emotion. <laughs> it is just an emotion. Let me talk about the righteous anger, righteous indignation, all kinds of things. We don't go any of those places in John chapter 2 that Jesus get angry. You know, all those things. Let us come back here, talk about us, talk about Jesus now. Actually, just talk about us now, us human beings now here. So, anger in itself is not right or wrong. It has nothing to do good or bad. But what is wrong here? The problem is that what do you do with the anger? It is our choice. So people used to say that he made me angry. No, 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 no. <laughs> she made me angry. No, 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 no. Nobody can make you angry at all. Anger is your response of that personality or that event or that person or whatever that it is. That person didn't stir up your anger at all. Why we respond in such a way, it is my choice. <laughs> it, what is already stored up in us? So we go some practical step out of this actually. So what do, how do you deal with the anger? We can deal with anger before or after. So how do you deal with anger before? You know, some practical stuff you see, before we get angry. The first step to deal with anger before we get angry is, is actually a willingness to accept to change. So many of the people you talk actually, in many times, I'm not angry by, by the way. Oh, hold on, man. <laughs> I'm not angry, but the way they express is what? I'm very angry. So that's so their, their, their face change, their tumble goes, and the sound change, all the things. Still they are not willing to accept that they are angry. That is the way they look at it. That's the way they present. So first step is that, do you have a desire to change? Willingness to change? Do I want to change? Since I am a person who is saved, I am a person who have a new life now, I want to act and react differently. That is the question. Do you want to do it or not? That is the first question that goes. So then we see, you know, if when we, as I said, you cannot, some, someone else cannot or some even cannot trigger us the anger. It is, we have to have a checklist. Look at your own anger history actually. What are the things, your thought patterns, what it make you angry? You check it out. In the past it happened. When it happened. How it happened. Look at those th places. Then the other thing is that learn to relax. Learn to relax. Now sometimes we all take life so seriously. That may not be that big deal actually after all. You know. So we make it as a big deal all of a sudden. This is what happened. You know for small incidents. You know that can trigger all of a sudden. You know. Husband is very 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 particular about his very discipline. He put all the stuff at the same place actually every day. And the wife comes, what happened? She take and throw it all over the place. You ask them, they don't even say that they take it actually. First of all, they don't admit it. You know, oh, you know you, you, for example, you, you comb, you know, hair is very important to me. So my comb, I have a comb, I have to go and put all these things at the right place. It will take time, man, you know. So I want the right, my comb should be at that place. Some people in our family actually, they take it, you know. They, I don't tell their name, you know, but they take it. They never put it back at the right place. We ask them, do you take my comb? <laughs> they, they don't say yes or no to that. They know this is, they, they can trigger me. My fuse will go off actually with this. It's a simple thing. But now I learn actually comp is not a big deal, man. After all, it is going to go anyway. You know, why you have to worry about these things? You know, so sometimes we small things make it very seriously. If it don't happen that way, this is the end of the world. No, it can be other way also. The, 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 the quotation that I think that the, the instinct that Paul get from here is uh, Psalms 4.4. 4. Read that verse. The same thing is repeated another way in the Old Testament. Psalms 4.4. 4. Psalms 4.4. 4. Let everybody take it actually. So you will see this. Not only that I say. 4.4. 4. Be angry again. Oh, some of you get the license here. <laughs> be angry. This is a dangerous stuff. But sin not. Then what do what you do next? Commune with your own hearts on your bed and be silent. <laughs> Let me translate it like this. You know, it's not it's, 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 paraphrase it. Relax. <laughs> Relax. What do you say? Commune in your bed. Lie down a little more time and take some deep breath. Not yoga again. Just take some deep breath and say what? It is? Okay, you think a little more time. You don't respond the way that you responded to the other time then. So learn to relax. This is before anger. Pray God will give us the strength to control our tongue. 
before say anything somebody said like this our tongue is in a wet place it has a tendency to slip always it is on a wet place we say things all of a sudden that should have been said you know we, we could have avoided that thing so we get angry so before that make a decision whether i have to change my my behavior or act, uh, 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 patterns or not then we relax take things so little light it is all right i think that cs lewis once said the angels can fly because they take themselves so light <laughs> you get the other side then right the angels can fly because they take themselves so light we are heavy head people so we cannot fly at all we take things so serious so go slow what happened after we feel angry so this is for the pious people actually let us come to our terms now after we, we feel angry what happened anger is a process there are three components in anger one is is a mental response we feel angry our thoughts our emotions that stir up actually you know all this acid that build up all kinds of things comes along with that then the verbal response we speak that out then the physical response not breaking stuff by the way i'm talking about you know your behavior you know, how you respond to those things mental response our emotions our thoughts our verbal response then our physical response these are the three components after we felt anger that that we are, we feel angry and so this is the way that comes how do we deal if we are mentally how you deal it you know we take some time again get info before you respond sometimes we just act upon bad information this is in the, the books and somebody counselor says like this actually there was a man who was sitting in a train this is a hypothesis he was sitting in a train he has an unruly boy he's just doing all kinds of things in that cabin and the people are looking and this man has paying no attention like some of our people actually no attention whatsoever they can do anything you know they are looking and he is looking in a deep thought he is looking through the windows outside this there is a lady is getting angry and she is getting very irritated and she is looking at the man look at the boy look at the man look at the boy and this man is in the sky and he is not thinking what nothing at all and she look at other people everybody is irritated somebody had to do something at this moment this lady was so angry she got up and went to that man said do you this is your son he said yeah then he woke up oh yeah this is my son do you can you control him he is ruining all our trip all kinds of things this man look at her lady's face and said i'm so sorry you know my wife died 5 days ago her body is in the back of this cabin here we are taking her that is his mother we are taking her body to be buried in her birthplace i was lost in thoughts i was just sitting you just imagine the other side how this woman will respond if she knew this information before many of the time we respond and react without enough information the husband may be had a tight difficult day at home at work and they came back the wife is sitting all day at home and finally they come actually they collide each other <laughs> without knowing what happened each one of them lives happen we act without enough information this is very down to earth practical things i am saying we can avoid that the other thing is be aware of our misplaced anger sometimes we get angry upon the wrong people you are upset with the sherichan that is your maybe your thing you know so what happened and i i burst it out bow chan then i get actually because this is the first person i got because of that i you want to say you ask me some how are you doing what is your problem you have to do or not <laughs> oh so as you know this is dealing with the people so much time some days i felt actually some people are really angry at me because i tried to tell them vijay how are you doing he is not talking at all so i thought oh vijay is angry at me no vijay was angry at renu <laughs> so i that i he just placed it on me later you know you have a bad day at work you bring it where at your home dump it up upon whom upon your wife our husband you know whatever that it is actually yes yeah this all happens so sometimes we misplaced anger we pray to different people and we have to evaluate our anger feelings where that come from and finally we can say is actually remember god is in control and i had a sticker at our home actually when we used to leave relax god is in charge i wrote on top of that alex relax god is in charge you know because i am a worried person that is my personality i just get worried about small things i try to learn you know this principle sometime actually to apply it's not easy you know we get both ways we get worried we get angry also this all maybe our personality 
But remember that just slow down. What happened after you feel anger? Paul says that be angry but do not sin. There is a danger that goes along with that. So the third thing, how, so the first component is that what happened? The mental and the verbal. That is the other way actually. The verbal anger, how do you, how do you deal your anger verbally? The first thing is that we learn to express our feelings. Do not withdraw. You know, not lie down on the bed as for four that we read earlier. What happened? You, know, you should learn to express that in a proper manner. That is one thing that we do. And we have to share one issue at a time. One issue at a time. Don't back up your all your emotional dump truck and unload at a time. <laughs> this is all. Because you are just building this up for a while actually. You are carrying with these things. And finally you got an opportunity. What do you do then? Open up and dump it, everything, all of a sudden. One thing at a time. Don't go with the historical thing, as people say. You know, historical. People, every counseling actually, people become historical. They go 20 years back. They still remember actually, this is what happened. You know, you see that even we forgive, but we don't forget. That's, that's natural. All those things come all of a sudden. No, you just wait. This is the issue now. No, I said this to her and she didn't like it. This is what triggered actually. Stop talking about that at this point. You know, be present here. Don't go with all the past experiences along with that. You know, don't use. And, uh, you know, many times the anger is a result of frustration. Right? We didn't get the things that we want to. The tantrum that the kids have. The same thing. As we grow older, the tantrum also getting older. That's the only difference. <laughs> we don't get the things that we want to get. The way we want to get. When we want to get. What is the result of it? We get frustrated. We express in anger. So what happened? He expressed our expectation verbally. What do you do? You tell the other person. This is again husband and wife or friends or pastor or anyone else actually. You tell them this is your expectation. Don't play the guest game. After living with me, after these years, he didn't understand what I think actually. I don't want it. Huh. Really? <laughs> no, why don't you tell? This is what I want. This is the way I feel comfortable. Would you please accept that? Can you do that? Can you open that? There the pride comes. I will never say that until he or she do it. They have to realize it. No, your expectation should be expressed. Your expectation should be expressed. Tell them, this is what I Need. This is my, my emotional need is. This is what I want. So let the person know. Not just to be, you know, uh, to be. Some people are very emotional people. They will never express whatsoever at all. You know, some people say this always, you know. I don't tell them I love them because when I got married, I told them already. Why you have to say this every time? I'm still married with them because that is why I love them. <laughs> That's the proof of it. No, we are Indian men. You know, this is part of us. It's all right. You know, once in a while to buy the flower and all. I don't know. You know, it is it's okay. Maybe to express some time. That's all right. Some people never express at all. And, uh, you know, the, the other thing that we can do after we feel anger is that avoid the win or lose situation. Many people when come to argument, they come with actually whether we want to win the battle or not. This is not about win or lose. Who is going to win here? <laughs> Who is going to lose here? Because when we can win or lose things, the conversation goes like always you, you and you. You can change the conversation to I. You know, when you become you, is a, it's a word that becomes provoking the people that is aggressive. That is, you know, that is, a, it is more, more to, to distract the other person. You can say the other way actually, I feel like this. You make me like this. No, 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 no. I feel like this. It is you. You say, you talk about yourself, not about the other person, not to put down the other person. So don't accuse or attack the other person. Avoid the you words and use the I words. I words are assertive and confronting. The you words are aggressive and attacking. So you can say that I am upset. What happens if you don't do this? Why are we take this much time to say these things? What is the result of it? First of the verse tells us, you know what happened? If we don't properly process our anger, that will go into our system. To be there. That will be expressed in different ways physically. You know, you all ask this uh, medical professional people. Many of the physical illness is a result of emotional baggage people carry. You know, Dr. Thompson gave Matthew. Years ago, once he came to teach us, actually, he said a story. He was a chaplain. He said that there was a lady. You know, she had a, a different weird kind of cough. And he acted, you know him, you know. He acted very well, that weird cough that come. 
and uh, they did all kinds of things, all kinds of tests. Nobody is not finding out whatever that it is. So they sent the chaplain to pray with her and talk to her and you know, make things and all. Chaplain went and he went and talked to them, talked to her. This lady, and you know, when, when we had the conversation during the time of this uh, course of conversation, she just come with her cough. Oh, you know, that goes up and down. And he just pray and talk and all. And two, three times he went back and talked to her. And he realized that actually whenever he mentioned about her ex-husband, that is where the cough comes. <laughs> that is where this comes. You know, this is what the trigger all of a sudden actually. So he noticed the pattern that comes back again and again and again. And he asked about all the questions about what happened, all kinds of things. Man, she cannot talk at all because coughing only at, at that time. <laughs> whenever the mention of the name of the other person come into picture, what happened? She, this is a physical problem, this is a poison that we are thinking. As it says, usually anger is something that you drink, the poison and expecting the other person will die. That is the way anger is, that poison our system physically. Then Paul here says, more or not, not only that, what happened? This not only poison our system, be angry but do not sin. Then Paul says, do not give a foothold to the devil. What happened? You get upset and angry about something else. You went to bed that day without resolving the issue. What happened? That piling up in your mind. You wake up first in the morning. What, is, what comes in your mind? That person's words or the accusations, or the actions, whatever that was done. That, what is that, you know what is that tells you? Your unconscious mind is processing that thing. Still, it getting root over there. That become a stronghold in that place. The devil got an, an opportunity because of that. What is the result of it? You lose the relationship with the other person. You know, whatever that it is then, when you lose the fellowship with one another, you are breaking the blessing from God. Right? That is what happened. Not only that, go to the next level then. You know, you violate God's principle then. You even grieve the Holy Spirit because of that. Look at that. This is the result of it. That's what it says. So I am not saying that I am a very pious person, very nice person. No, we all get angry and upset. But how we can scripturally address those things and we can have a healthy relationship in the families, in the workplaces, in the church, in all our interactions. That is important. It is a wonderful thing to talk about. Chapter 1, 2, 3, that is not much affecting in our sense if you don't understand. This, apply these things into our life. This is the result of it. So Paul says that anger can turn into hatred and malice. And Paul says because of that, do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Do not let the sun go down your wrath. So we see the practices of the new life, kind-hearted talk. You know, you have a, your temper is controlled by the Holy Spirit. Not only that, you have a honest work. Chapter 4, verse 28. What happened? He who has been stealing must, must steal no longer, but must work. Doing something useful with his own hands, that he may have something to share with those in need. Look at that, you know, just one thing only you see that is a challenge of a radical Christian. You know what it is? Why do you work? How do you live? Stealing is selfishness. You want what someone else does. They want to get, get it. But working is something different. Like working can also be sinful in one way. You know, as Indians, we say that, you know, I, th I think that we said many times, when Ammachi said, my son has a very nice job, he has to do anything at all. You know, some people think that doing nothing is a good job. No, that is stealing. I'm your employer actually. You should be faithful in your work. You know, you should be faithful in, in our work. But what is the purpose of work? Not only to have a financial security, to have a lot of things that we can use, we can indulge in our own things, we can live in luxury. Is that is the reason? No. Look at that what Paul says here. What is the purpose? That we work with our own hands, that he may have something to share with those in. Look at the noble reason that we work. Why? We have something else. What happened then? To help something else don't have. Corinthians Paul says that, you know, our abundance, whatever we have should be a blessing the people, those who don't have it. So we are not just working like animals, you know, working all the time, piling up our, our stock or our, our, our things so that our, our life is, is settled and secure. We can hand it over to our children. Those are one way it is good, but that's not the end of it. But it is to support those who don't have it. That is the Christian principle, Paul says. So the new life, the principle is that the old times I just steal, I just work hard, I get all the things. It is only thinking about myself. 
But here what happens? That change. Talk about other people also. It's not only the preoccupation. Verse 32 will go far, further. Time is up. Verse 32. Then what is the result of all these things? Then we will have a meaningful relationship. We'll have meaning. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. Remember that Christian faith is personal, but it is not private. It is personal. Your relationship, whatever the faith you carry, it is up to you. Nobody is going to force something upon you. You can force your personal views or your belief upon someone else. We agree and honor that. But it is personal, but it is not private. If you are a Christian, you are a child of God, you are a follower of Jesus Christ, your actions, your reactions not only affect you, that affect others also. We have a corporate responsibility as the children of God to resemble, to represent God and his name, the gospel, wherever God has placed us. Whether it is in the city or it is a family or it is a workplace or your school, wherever it is, you claim that I am a Christian, I am a child of God. Your faith is not private in that matter. That is important. The way you act and re react, your temper, your actions, your words, everything has huge impact upon the entire kingdom of God in that matter. That is a heavy responsibility. So the people earlier that we read, the pattern of the old life, they gave themselves to sensuality and they live without any sensitivity about any other people. I feel right. This is what I want to do it. I just do it. That's the way it is. But now that changed. What happened now? The practice is no. This may be comfortable for me. I may want to do it. But I always think about the other person also. Paul talked at other places about eating meat. All kinds of things and all. It is not only you should not eat or you should eat. He says that you consider the weak believer. You think about the other person also. This is what happens. This will become a corporate responsibility because of that. So there is a meaningful relationship. So what happened? You think differently. You act differently. You now you have a way you express your emotions even. Responsibly. Our temper, we react and respond responsibly. Knowing that we cannot download all those things upon other people. We are part of a body of Christ. The things that we do that affect the other part of the body also. So this may, I like it, I don't like it. But we have to think about the well-being of the entire body. Not only about myself. That's what many people don't want to go to church or to be, don't be part of the church at all because they don't want to take this responsibility. But this is a privilege that God has given to us to be the organs of God's kingdom. Two warnings Paul gives. One is that we already said, do not give a foothold to the devil. Do not give the opportunity for the devil to work. He likes to work, make divisions and work into that to put and charge us with all kinds of emotions. Be careful. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit which we were sealed for the day of our redemption. Did not grieve the Holy Spirit. When we offend each other, some of the translation you read actually, it goes further with that meaning. When you offend each other, we are not only offending the people, it is offending Holy Spirit himself because he desires unity among us. Right? He wants to be part of the same body. So be careful. When we violate you know, constantly and we consciously the will of the Holy Spirit, the will of God in our lives, what are we doing? The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He will not violate you and your will. But when you constantly ignore the call of God in our lives, not only obeying God, what happened then? The Holy Spirit is grieved. Holy Spirit is not a, person, not a force. He is a person. He is grieved in us. We belong to him. We are sealed for him for the day of redemption. So let us pray that we want to do this this week. How we are going to apply this. In our family, in our relationships, let us try to apply this principle. When we talk to people, talk with more kindly. You know, wait for a second. Learn to understand what they are trying to say. We may not have the, all the information. We don't judge the people based upon what they said or what happened. Just wait. We may not have the, all the information. Wait. Let us love together. Let us resemble the body of Christ in the city for the glory of Jesus Christ. Would you please pray? Let us conclude this morning. Let us pray.